start recording. Cool. So welcome to the final day of the first week. Uh, it's been a crazy week. We've learned a lot, covered a lot of material. Um, before we dive into working with GitHub and the Git Lecture, uh, I want to talk a little bit about how the day is going to go. Uh, so originally, uh, I had a, a hackathon on the class schedule on the whiteboard. Um, I've decided to make it an optional hackathon. So depending on where you're at with the material, you can kind of choose your own adventure today. You're either going to, if you feel comfortable with everything we've covered so far, you'll uh, group up on the whiteboard like you have been doing. Um, and let's see, I actually, I think for those project groups, I'll recommend groups of three or four based on how many people are gonna be working on projects rather than groups of two. Um, actually, you know what, I take that back. Let's, let's stick with pairs for today. So you'll break into pairs on the whiteboard and then you'll start to work on a project. Or if you feel like you need to review some of the concepts that we've covered so far, you can choose to review on your own today. Um, and your, I'll, I'll leave, uh, let's see, I'll leave it up to you whether you want to review solo or reach out to somebody else that's uh, at the same level or covering the same material and you can review as a pair if you want. Um, and then the last thing, the code that I'm going to have you pull down from GitHub today is a, uh, a GitHub repo that we've been working on that's going to act as kind of a, uh, a review or self-assessment tool for yourself. Um, it's going to allow you, there's a separate uh, lesson in this repo for each day. So it's going to allow you to uh, review the material that we've been covering this week. And also as we move forward, it will allow you to uh, have kind of a review tool for each day um, where you can work on the concepts we're learning in isolation. So you don't have to, so it's, you know, like with while loops or if and else, it can be a little bit hard to get to the meat of the material sometimes when you're working with the inconsistencies or challenges of getting it to link up to an HTML document. And while that's definitely a part of it, learning how to connect a JavaScript script to an HTML document and make it work in the browser, right? That's what you do in the real world. It's also helpful to have this separate tool to get at the core concepts without having to worry about any of the additional um, in anything outside of the core concept. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and jump in to get. Oh, cool. All right. Can you all see those slides? Cool, thank you. Alrighty, so Git, what is Git? Git is a, uh, a system for version control. Uh, so version control is something that people use in the uh, software engineering world. Um, and I guess probably in the greater technology world outside of software engineering um, to manage different changes in a program or uh, technology. Um, so we'll be using it as a way to a kind of store changes. So if you mess something up, you can jump back in time to the last time it was working. Uh, and you can also create separate, uh, branches so that you'll be able to kind of add different changes, test them out. And then if they work, you can add them as part of the main project. Uh, so let's get into it. It'll make a little bit more sense once we start to dive deeper in. So Git is an open source distributed version control system. Git was created by Linus Torvalds and the rest of the Linux team as a way to increase productivity while developing modern Linux kernels. Um, some people out there may have heard of Linus Torvalds. Uh, I think he has some repute in the software development world, um, especially the open source world. 
All right, so Git from a 40,000 foot view, uh, just kind of a high level view of it. Files are stored in a repository. To edit the files locally, you clone the source code and make your edits. So let's imagine this big box is GitHub, right? There's a repo up on GitHub that different people are working on on their computers. And you, um, you have a, a connection to that repo on your computer, and you can pull down changes to that repo. After making edits, so let's say you pull down some code. Um, then you will store those edits and push it back up to the original repo so that other people that are also working on the same, uh, same website or application or piece of software can pull down those changes. And then you'll all have um, access to the same code. So it's kind of what we're using Fluvits for right now, but it's not uh, real time in the same way. So we'll get into some basic Git vocabulary. Add. So you're going to use the add command to tell Git that you have made changes, and you need those changes to be marked as ready to be committed. Commit. You'll use the commit command to tell Git that the files you have edited are ready to be pushed up to the server, in our case, GitHub. During a commit, you add a short but detailed description of the changes you have made so that other people looking at the commit history, they can see a history of all the commits on GitHub. You add a detailed message so that they know what changes have been made through each of the different commits. Uh, I'm sorry, I have one question about that. Yeah. Uh, can we, on, uh, on Git, can we like mark a uh, individual files or rather put comments on individual files even though they're part of the same like commit or rather push command? Um, I don't think that you can make commit messages to specific files, um, but it's recommended that you commit regularly. So if you did want to do that, uh, more of what you would be doing would be to change that specific file and then make a commit immediately after that. Um, and when you push up to GitHub, you don't have to push after every commit. So you might make five or six commits and then you push to GitHub and you label that time working um, on those five or six commits, you might give a general message of that. But then when someone goes to the repo online and looks at the commit history, they'll be able to A, see all of your commit messages, and B, actually look at the changes to the code that happened each time. They can look in separate files using the commit history and see a line by line changes that you've made. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, so push. This is the command you're going to use when you're ready to push your files up to the server. Uh, again, in our case, GitHub. Um, as I was just talking about, when you're working, you might make several commits between pushes. Um, and you do want to commit often, because if you break something, it's going to allow you to jump back in time incrementally to the last point at which it was working. Um, and it will also, you'll have a commit history. Uh, you'll be able to see differences over different commits on your own machine. Uh, so by committing regularly, it will be easier to see where code might have gotten broken. Pull. So pull is the command you're going to use to download only the changes that have been made to files and pushed up to the repository. Let's say that you're working on a team of four people. You're all working separately. And someone, you know, you all clone down the code. So you start with the same code. Someone might make some commits and then push them up. You don't want to change too much of your code without pulling down those changes because otherwise your code are going to have changes that conflict with one another. Uh, so you'll be pulling down code regularly as a way to avoid any conflicts between changes from different team members. That said, um, we probably won't get into too much pulling or merging or handling merge conflicts until a little bit later in the course when we're working on bigger group projects. 
All right, a repo. Repo is short for a repository. A repository can be thought of as a central location that is used to store your code base. And different versions of the same um, code base can exist within a repository, but then also different versions of that repository can exist. So uh, I'm going to have you pull down a repository in a few minutes. There is a version of that repository that's going to stay on GitHub. And then when you start to work on it locally, you're going to have a different version of that repository. Merge. To merge code that has been pushed into your code base. Um, so when someone makes changes, uh, let's say that a, you own a repository on GitHub and another team member makes changes they're going to ask for you to add those changes to the main repository. Um, and you can select to merge those changes in or to reject them. Diff. So diff is a command that we're going to be using to compare differences between two versions of a file. The differences are usually explicitly marked red for deletions and green for additions. A conflict is when multiple edits have been made to the code base that have conflicting lines of code. Usually they are the same line of code that two people have both pushed around at the, around the same time. Most of the time, these need to be resolved manually. A branch is a duplicate of your file structure and code base. This allows you to make changes without worrying about breaking the original code base. So when I was talking about having different versions of a, of a code base inside of the same repository, this is what we're talking about. Let's say you're working on an application and you want to create a new feature for that application, um, but you're not sure if it's going to break something else or if it's going to work at all, or maybe you won't even want it in the end. So you create a new branch. That branch has all the same files as before, but as you continue to work on it, it's going to have a separate history, a uh, separate commit history that you are working from and separate files. And you'll be able to switch back and forth between branches. Uh, checkout is the command that you use to jump back and forth between branches to look at one branch or another. So clone is what you're, the command you're going to use to pull down a repository from GitHub to your local machine. All right, so before I get into this example Git workflow, I'm actually, I'm actually going to walk through this example Git workflow using the code we'll be pulling down today. Um, so let's see. This is the team that we'll all be members of. So again, uh, you should have received an invitation in your email. Let me know if you haven't. Um, and right now, this team has one repository. So I'm going to go to that repository. This repository is owned by Remote Beta. The first thing that I'm going to do in order to bring this to make my own copy of this repository is that I'm going to fork it. What forking does is it takes a repository somewhere else online, um, and then you decide to place it in your own personal GitHub or in your organization's GitHub. You'll notice that I'm part of a bunch of different organizations. It's likely that you'll just have your own personal GitHub when you open this window. Uh, so again, you click the fork button. You select your personal GitHub. And then it is forked over to your GitHub. That one went really fast. Usually there's like a loading window. Um, don't worry if you see the loading window. It just takes a second to pull it over. All right, so now you'll notice that I'm in the same repository, but now it's inside of my personal GitHub. Before, we were in the remote beta GitHub. And now the repository, there's a separate copy in my personal GitHub. Cool, so now I have a copy that I can work with. Um, and just one thing to note, any 
repository that's out there online that's public. Uh, this is private, but I've, we've given you access to it. But any repository that's public, you can go fork, and then you have your own copy that you could work from. For instance, jQuery, there's a copy of it on GitHub. You could go fork the jQuery code, and then you would have a copy in your GitHub, and you could start to make changes and have uh, your own version of jQuery, essentially. All right, so now I'm going to uh, clone it down to my machine. The way that we clone it down is to select this URL right here, and then I copy and paste it. So I copied it, and then I'm gonna go to my command line. Um, and again, you might be using the, the GitHub desktop application. Um, I would recommend once you get familiar or if you just wanna try doing it now, using the command line. Uh, it's a faster workflow and it's what you'll be expected to do professionally. Um, that said, it's not necessary for the course, uh, for remote prep. So I'm gonna type git clone and then I'm going to paste that URL that I grabbed before. And you'll see that it's cloning it down to my machine. Uh, it's doing a whole bunch of things with the files. Okay, now it's, it's done, which means it, it exists in my machine. Once it finishes, uh, you're still gonna be in the whatever folder you were in beforehand. It will have created a, a new Git repository inside of that folder. So you'll have to use CD to move down into the, the folder that you've just created. Let's say CD space, and then you will find, let me expand this, 2016 remote prep dot get. So the, um, and then a secret uh, shortcut with the command line. Once you start to type out a file name, if you hit tab, it will autocomplete for you. So I'm gonna run that command. So now I'm inside of remote prep. So I'm gonna go ahead and open all of the files inside of there. I used a Adam come to the built-in command line command. You can say Adam period and it will open all of the files in a directory. All right, so while Adam is loading, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop and take questions about what we've done with the Git workflow so far. Can I have one more real quick? Yeah. Uh, about uh, now we cloned it, uh, do we have to like use a Git command to delete it or can we just delete it and Git will be okay with that? You won't like expect to find something in a certain... I'm not, I'm not quite uh, sure. We would, to, why would you want to delete it? For, um, I, I don't know, it just popped, popped to my mind, like if I, for some reason, didn't like it or put it in a wrong folder. Okay. Um, yeah, you can just delete the, the folder. It's not going to okay. disturb yet. Um, ramification. And... Um, yeah, you can delete it, move to a different folder, clone it again. You can make different clones of the same repository on your machine in different places. Uh, you just have to name it a different thing. Um, you can even, once you've cloned it down, you can rename this folder, uh, and it will still be able to find the right place on Git. Um, let me, I'm gonna list all of the files inside of, inside of this directory. Cool, so I just listed everything. You'll notice that there is a file called git.git .git inside of our remote prep directory. Um, so that .git, if you open that up, that actually has uh, all of the information that GitHub needs to, to know, like when you go to push it, where to push it, or when you go to pull it, where to pull it from. So yeah, you can put it wherever you want on your machine. 
But as long as you have that .git file, uh, it'll know what to do. Um, and then I, I see a, a little question here about um, Sublime oh. Dot to open things. Yeah. Um, you have to set that up. So it, um, Adam, it's a little bit easier. It's already kind of built in. Um, you'll have to Google around to, to get that set up for Sublime, though. Yeah. I can, um, I'll find an article and paste some instructions in the Slack once we get started today. Uh, yeah, for people, I guess I'll just go ahead and mention this to everyone. You can set up a, uh, a similar command using Sublime Text. Usually people will prefix it as subble, um, so you can say subble period, and then it'll open everything with Sublime Text instead. And correct me if I'm wrong, Zan, but in order for the Atom um, to work, don't you have to go to Atom and then install the, install the shell commands as well? Um, oh, um, in the left corner, like for, like the Atom drop down menu there. I, I actually I don't remember doing that, but I do believe you. All right, so it's possible that in order to make that Atom command work, when you're in Atom, you'll have to click Atom and click install shell commands. All right, um, so now I'm gonna continue moving. Um, so this is a, a repo, again, that we've set up for you so that you can review material and assess your understanding of core concepts that we've covered. I'm gonna go ahead and um, open the index.html, which is the, uh, the main file that you'll be using to see if your work is working. So we've got a bunch of uh, tests in here in the spec folder. You don't need to worry about those. You're actually gonna be working in this, the source folder. Let me open it up in the browser though so you can see what it's gonna look like. So I open index.html. Cool. So you start out on a blank page. This is the remote prep quest testing suite. Um, and if you click the, hmm, one second. Huh. I'm not sure. I believe that there is an error with our link to jQuery. One second. All right. As it stands at the moment, you might have to go grab a link for jQuery. I'm going to add a jQuery CDN. All right. Cool. Now the menus are working. So one thing you will have to do, um, and I'll fix this and put in a pull request once we get done with the lecture, you'll have to add a, a jQuery CDN link like you were doing yesterday to make the menus work. All right, so for each of the lessons we've encountered this week, you can navigate to that lesson and you'll see that there are tests and the tests are failing. In order to get the test to work, you'll go to the source folder, you'll open the week that it's in and the lesson that it's in. 
and then there will be there will be instructions for um, what parts you need to fill in to make the test work. Um, so it's kind of split up. There there might be some hints and instructions in the source files. Uh, the tests are also going to describe what you have to do to get the test to pass. Um, so for instance, we're looking at if else, um, we can actually, I'm going to work through a little bit of this and I'll, I'll take guesses in the chat. Um, so the first thing we need to do, we're working with data types and we need to assign each variable to the value of the correct data type. We've got the first one filled out for us, Boolean equals true. Um, so does anybody want to type in the chat what line six should look like? Cool, I think that should work. And what about line seven? Cool. All right, so I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna come back over here. Cool, um, and that is working now. All right, um, so then we move on to conditionals. Fill in the conditionals below. Use three different comparators to ensure that the pin is mightier than the sword. So you'll notice that we've got three conditionals that need to be filled out. Line 19, line 21, and line 22. Um, does anyone, I actually, I might take a, a volunteer and I'll have you unmute your mic and you can walk me through filling out all three of these conditionals. If no one volunteers, I might have to pick on someone. Uh, let's see. Um, I'll give it a shot, Sam. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so fill in the conditionals below. Use three different operators to ensure that the pen is mightier than the sword. So, okay. If, so the first line is going to compare pen and sword. So I'm a little bit confused, first of all, about, I'll give it a shot first and then I'll ask okay. some questions. So I wanna compare pen if pen is, um, I guess I wanna do if pen is greater than the sword. Alrighty. And then do you wanna to try to fill out the other two? Yeah, if 10 is greater than the sword, mightier equals sword. If else, if so, the else if is going to be another option sword, if else. I'm thinking this is going to be another option, so probably if else. I want to say pen is less than sword. I'm not sure if that's right. Can you give me a clue? Yeah, sure. So we know that eventually we want the pen to be mightier. So we want to get to line 23. Um, okay. So we need to construct the yeah conditionals so that we eventually end up at line 23 right now since we're comparing we're saying pin is greater than sword since pin is equal to 100 and sword is equal to 10 uh that's actually going to equate to true and we'll end up on line 20. so we could do one of two things we could change our comparators 
um, so that we move to line 23, or we could change the values of pin and sword to get to line 23. How about if we write um, pen is not equal to sword? On line 19? Or on line 21? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, actually, I think this will, well, still, this will still equate to true. Uh, and so we'll end up in line 20. Pen is equal to sword? Cool. Yeah, I think that should work. All right, that's now we'll false. be. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay, so if pen is equal to sword, which is going to be false, is going to continue. So if else. If pen is not equal to sword, pen is not equal to sword, which is true, which is true, which we want it to be, because then it will go into that else if block. Um, and now we have to use one other comparator to true. to get to line twenty three. Pen is greater than sword. Cool. I think that should work. All right, so I'll save that. And I'll reload the page. Cool. And that passes. Um, for this one, there are some... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Did you have a question, Cynthia? I oh, know. That's fine. No, that's fine. Okay. Fine. Um, You'll notice that it shows some tests that are kind of keel. They aren't showing up yet. Uh, you'll have to uncomment the lower sections to get those tests to start showing up. Um, but I think I'll go ahead and leave the rest up to y'all when you pull it down. Um, so now that we've made some changes, um, I think that I want to commit those changes. And I want to push them back up to my copy of this repository on GitHub. So the first thing that I'm going to type is git status. And that's going to show me any changes I've made that have not been added. In order to add those changes, I'm going to type git add. And I can either uh, add them by each file name. Or if I type git add period, it's going to add every file that I've changed that isn't currently added. Once I've added it, I'll run git status again. And you can see that now these files in green have been added and are ready to be committed. So we'll type git commit dash m space. And then you create quotation marks. And whatever you want your commit message to be, uh, you put between quotation marks. So I might say, um, well, for the moment, I'll just say initial commit. All right, so now those are committed and ready to be pushed up. So I'll go ahead and type git push origin. So origin refers to your copy of the repo that you've cloned down. Git push origin master. Master is the branch that we are working on. So I'll hit enter. And now those have been pushed up to my GitHub account. And if I reload this page, you'll notice that I have a commit from 33 seconds ago with a commit message of initial commit. Um, all right, so from there, I'm going to make a different branch so I can show you what that looks like. Before I move into that, do we have any questions about the few commands that I just did? Can I have one? Sorry. Yeah, no, no, I'll be sorry. So uh, the git commit, uh, just one moment. I kind of lost it for a second. Mm. I can scroll so up. 
Yeah, the uh, it was a uh, command that you uh, called. Yeah, the origin one. Uh, I I'm used to pull, pulling like a, a or rather push uh, minus U, and then origin, and then it kind of automatically pushes my master. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. So anytime you have a dash like that, I, it sounds like you're saying you do get push dash. Yeah. Dash U. And then origin. Um, so these are called flags, and they they will do the same command, but they alter how it's done. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the U flag does. I have to look at documentation. Um, um, Zan, I think it tells it uh, it tells Git push to remember that he's pushing to origin. So then, in the future, when he goes to push, he can just do Git push. He doesn't need to do Git. Push, oh, okay. I believe I could be wrong on that. It's not. Oh, I'll use it often. To try. Cool. That's a good thing uh, to know. I might have to try using that myself. Um, yeah, so anything, so that one might remember where you try to push to. There's another one. Sometimes um, I end up having to use the force flag, so that's dash F. And that will... Um, even if there's any merge conflicts on your copy of the branch, it will push all of the changes. It will push your copy of the repo to your GitHub. Um, all right, are there any other questions about git status, git add, or git commit, or git push? Alrighty, um, cool. Well, if there are no other questions, then I'm gonna show you how to make a, a branch. Um, and I will note as we're moving, don't worry if it feels like you're not quite remembering everything with Git. Um, probably the first few times you use Git, you're gonna have to look at some instructions for each of these. Um, and I post, there's some links on the whiteboard uh, and I'll repost some links I posted into Slack again. Uh, but definitely Git is something that, that you won't remember until you've had a chance to use it over and over. Um, and then once you have had a chance to use it over and over, you'll, have, you'll notice that there's maybe like six to eight commands that you use 80% of the time. Um, so it'll become second nature, but it'll be after you've had a chance to use it a lot. All right, so I'm going to create a separate branch. Um, and I'm going to create a branch called GH Pages. GitHub has a platform that allows you to, uh, they will host websites for you. If you create, uh, you have to have two conditions met. First off, you need a branch called GH-Pages. And also, your repository has to have an index.html file in it because that's the file that, uh, that the, GitHub, the GitHub Pages platform is gonna open initially. And then you can have other pages that it moves to from there, but you need that index.html as your, uh, your initial landing page. Um, and you'll notice that we, we already have the index.html, so I'm gonna say git checkout dash b gh pages. So once again, checkout is what you use to look at different branches. I used the dash B flag to create a branch. And now if I type, I uh, think git dash B, no, git, git branches. I'm trying to remember, there we go. All right, so the command is if you type git branch, it will show you all of the branches you currently have. And the branch that you're currently on will be highlighted in green. All right, so now that I'm, I have my GitHub pages branch, I'm gonna go ahead and push that branch up to my GitHub so that it will be hosted on GitHub pages. Git push origin, and then at the end, I'm going to specify the GitHub pages branch. Now, when I reload on GitHub, You'll notice that 
I have a GitHub Pages branch. Cool. So that's not super exciting yet. It's just a branch that's sitting on my GitHub. What is exciting is that now I can go to GitHub IO and I can actually see that index.html. Um, so the way to get to it is that you'll type in your GitHub handle dot GitHub dot IO slash, and then you'll type in the name of the repository that you want to look at. So it's 2016 04 remote prep. Cool. And now this is existing as a live website online. Um, I will also post some instructions for hosting a page on GitHub pages. I just wanted to show you that quickly so that if you are working on a project today, you would be able to post that project online. Um, and let's see, that's all I have for Git. Are there any questions about Git before we, what's the link again? Yeah, so it is, um, username dot github dot io slash repository name um, are there any other questions about get So this might sound like a daft question, but is Git and GitHub two separate things or is it just the same thing, but one is like the language and the other ones where you store your code? Yeah, that's actually a great question. Um, so Git is the technology and GitHub is a separate organization that is made as an online server for Git repositories. And there are actually other Git repositories out there. Um, I believe that Bitbucket is another large one. Um, yeah, Bitbucket is one that I think that professional teams use more internally, so not as much of a, uh, not as open or public. Um, but GitHub is by far the largest place online for Git repositories. But yeah, great question. Um, alrighty. If we don't have any other questions on Git, then I'm going to go ahead and have people um, go off and choose their own adventure. Once again, you'll either be uh, organizing yourself into pairs to work on a group project, or you'll be working solo or working as pairs to review materials that we've covered this week or materials uh, from the pre-course. If you are working on a project, I do want to advise you that um, that you're you're not going to be able to have a, a fully fleshed out application or website in two hours, or even if you continue to work on it this weekend, um, you're not going to have. I wouldn't shoot for something that is uh, a fully fully built website or application. Um, I would shoot for kind of a small project to practice the things that you have been learning. So for instance, um, I put together on my GitHub a little um, jQuery demo that I will, I'll share the link to this code and you're welcome to download this, uh, this repo if you, if you want to review jQuery or just kind of see how I did the things that I did on there. Um, and it does, it gets into a little bit of the, the event handling that we'll get into next week. So that is one caveat. It's a bit ahead of where we are. But in any case, I hosted it on GitHub pages. Um, it's pretty simple. So when I load the page, I've got some hidden divs on here. When you hover, you see the Nyon cat. Um, I can also add divs. Oh, I don't know if the add divs button is working. I can also show divs. I've got some animations going on. So really simple, nothing that anyone would ever necessarily actually use. 
Um, but just something fun to play around with and practice the skills that we've been learning. Are there any questions about projects before we break off to get to work? Not so much questions about the projects, but if we are working individually to mm -hmm. catch up, would you like us to provide you a Hangouts link to make contact with us during the day? Or? Yes, yeah, definitely okay. please do that. And I would, if you are reviewing, I would like to come around to each of the people that are reviewing just to see where you're at with the material and see if I can offer um, some assistance in terms of prioritizing what to get done to catch up. Okay, so just uh, maybe put in the pair, the, what is it, the pairs thing on whiteboard, just put our individual name solo next to it and then the Hangouts link? Yeah, that would be great. Okay, perfect, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Alrighty, cool. Well, in that case, um, I'll go ahead and end the meeting. Um, and I will, I'll post another Zoom link about 10 minutes before class ends and we can meet back up for a few minutes and just wrap up the week. So I'll see you all in a little bit.